Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Alakan discussion for July 23rd, 2021, reported around 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Not so much to talk about today, but a look at Invest Area 90L off the Florida coastline and what impacts it might bring to the southeastern United States over the next several days. So taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic here, again, not too much is occurring, though we do now have newly designated area of Invest 90L, which is off of Cape Canaveral and the Florida East Coast. And this will be setting around here in the Gulf Stream over the next several days. So some tropical cyclone uh, development chances are there. And development chances are now at a 40% over the next five days as it kind of just meanders around there in the Gulf Stream. And out across the deep tropics, we notice that there is two tropical waves down across here. One leaving Africa and one in the central southern part of the main development region. None of these are expected to develop as pretty dry Saharan air uh, to the north and just an unfavorable base state condition. Uh, is present across the region right now. So not really expecting tropical cyclone development down there in the deep tropics. But here, regardless, these will be tropical waves that will be passing through the islands within the next several days and could bring some gusty winds and heavy rainfall to the region. Uh, but otherwise, all is kind of quiet in the deep tropics. So if we look at Invest Area 90L, a kind of a closer in zoomed look here from tropicaltippets.com, we notice that, again, we're looking at an area of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity, uh, mainly positioned off the coast here of Florida. Uh, all of this is basically diurnally driven convection here on the Florida Peninsula, both on the east and west coast. And then you have this uh, kind of blob here of shower and thunderstorm activity, not really well defined. It's certainly not uh, compact in any sort of way. Uh, but we may have somewhat of a circulation or a broad area of low pressure uh, that is kind of north out across here. And the reason why this is like more likely to be positioned to the north is we have uh, some shear that is coming out of the southwest here and blowing or from the northwest blowing the storms to the southeast. So any convection would be like any convection around a concentrated area of low pressure would be sheared to the southeast. And thus, uh, it is not real likely right now that we get any significant consolidation. That shear is going to be there for quite some time. And if we actually look here at the next red here from Melbourne, we notice that we have what almost kind of just appears to be a transient uh, squall line basically that uh, rolls southward. You can kind of see that this is almost like a linear type feature that just kind of progresses southward with time. And uh, because of that, again, we can kind of roll this back and we can kind of see that again, we have this like transient feature uh, that seems to want to roll forward in time and progress and propagate southward. Now, what this tells me is that we're not really seeing any significant curling bands across here, which indicates that uh, any low-level sensor is very ill-defined at the moment, and we don't really have a concentrated area of circulation that is in here at the moment. So all of this is moving southward and not really curling inwards like that, which to me indicates that, again, there's not really a well-defined area of circulation so it is possible that it could be a little bit further back towards the west and through here where radar just isn't picking up because radar is picking up on this convection over here and maybe not more so what's going on down across here. But again, I, I really uh, struggle to see any well-defined area though there might be this area right in through here. But again, just very disorganized, not really seeing any substantial convection associated with it at this moment. Now, if we look here... At the 850 millibar vorticity map, this is the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And for context here, these reds and whites, that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. And if we kind of get a zoomed in better look at this, what we can kind of tell here is that we do have somewhat of a broad elongated area of vorticity. And we can kind of see that it's elongated. This is like the main circulation center right here, but we notice that it's kind of elongated uh, through this area. And this is actually a representation of a frontal boundary, a surface front that is moving across the area. It's a very weak, ill-defined cold front. Uh, and it's not a cold front necessarily by the fact that we have cold air behind it. But by definition only, this is a cold front. And we get this little area of vorticity that is kind of consolidated on the tail end of that front. And what we always kind of say is that we always have to watch the tail end of fronts, tail end of stalled or dissipating fronts, 
uh, for tropical cyclone development. And this is, in fact, one of those such cases out here. Now, the one thing that does go uh, for this system is the fact that we will have some pretty high upper ocean heat content in the Gulf Stream. And again, for context here, like these oranges and reds, this is basically very high upper ocean heat content. And we notice that right here in the Gulf Stream, which I'll just kind of highlight is this area through here. That's the Gulf Stream that runs from the Gulf and really the Caribbean down across here. But we notice that off the southeast coast and off the coast of Florida, the upper ocean heat content is more than sufficient with actual sea surface temperatures of about 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. So they are warm enough, but the wind shear will be the primary factor going against uh, formation at this moment. So we will be watching this over the next couple of days. Again, the upper ocean heat content is there. And in fact, if we kind of look here at the National Hurricane Center, uh, what we'll notice is that, again, the development area is right off the coast of Florida. And it's mainly kind of, again, positioned from really South Carolina through about Florida and about the Marsh Harbor and part of the Bahamas there. So, again, kind of a wide area. And uh, there is two separate areas where we could see this uh, break off into. And what we'll look at that for is the GFS 850 millibar uh, vorticity product. This is the GFS 850 vort, uh, vorticity. Again, it's been the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, for context, these darker reds, that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. Uh, this is the 12Z run Vela for 2 p.m. this afternoon. And what we notice is that, again, we have this area of vorticity right here. Now, if we compare this to the previous runs of the GFS, we notice that it's been constantly correcting for a stronger initial vortex. Now, this is about 48 hours ago right here. This is 48 hours ago. And we compare this to now. Again, it is a stronger uh, and more defined low-level sensor that is embedded in here or at about 5,000 feet. Now, we notice that we have a ridge out here, part of the Bermuda High, and we also have kind of a secondary ridge axis over here at this point, but a natural weakness in the ridge here because there's a trough to the north. And what we have is a natural breakdown in the steering pattern where this kind of just meanders around here for the next several days. But if we look at the overall environment and we can kind of gauge uh, how favorable this environment really is, we notice that there's going to be some shear in the atmosphere and more so there's a little bit of cyclonic flow or, or kind of, uh, you know, the kind of this uh, clock or yeah, clockwise flow basically uh, around here, which means that, again, we, we are naturally dealing with a little bit of shear above about 600 millibars. Uh, in the atmosphere because we have southwest winds here at the surface, but they change to kind of a more of a northwest flow, uh, just about 550 millibars, actually really at about 600 millibars that starts. And then we increase the speed, obviously, as we go forth uh, in time. The other thing that's really going to be hurting this is the fact that we do have some dry air aloft. And this dry air aloft uh, would be potentially transported down to the surface and with that happening, you get kind of outflow dominant storms and storms that are just collapsing and decaying. And it's not really a healthy uh, sign for development chances. Now, if we continue to move this forward here on the GFS, what we notice is that, again, this tail end of the front actually kind of breaks off where we get a, a lobe of energy that extends to the north here where we may have to watch for development chances there. And we also have this lobe of energy trying to become better consolidated off the Florida coast. And we notice that it's just staying put. So at least for the meantime, there will be some heavy rainfall. Now we notice again on the GFS forecast, we've been uh, consistently correcting towards a little bit of a stronger initial uh, vortex here on the model. This is by 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. And again, a look at the sounding uh, in this environment would kind of easily represent, uh, doesn't look like we'll get it, uh, but the sounding is more so representative of a pretty sheared environment. And we can kind of back it up here. We got this again. Yeah, this is not really a favorable environment at all. Very dry air aloft. And this is one of the primary concerns. I mean, this is good for severe weather, but it is bad for tropical cyclones because they need a moist column that would extend much something like this. They need a column that is pretty much identical to the green line here that I just drew. 
and not this green line, which is over here. This is very indicative of very dry, stable air. The wind direction has now shifted. We got winds out of the easterly direction here, uh, blowing northernly at about 500 millibars. Very unsupportive for tropical cyclone development. And in fact, that's why nothing really happens. And then the system kind of ends up falling apart there in the Gulf of Mexico. So again, this will bring some rainfall. If we look here at the precipital water and the relative humidity product here, again, we can kind of see that we do have an enhanced rain threat, uh, at least for the next couple of hours. But this kind of remains a very dry part of the wave here and actually dries things out. Then we kind of get another surge here by Tuesday as some moisture lifting northward uh, on the back end of this, but nothing really significant. Again, development chances are there, uh, but if anything, maybe a weak depression, maybe a weak storm, nothing more than that at this point. All right, so with that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.